Hello, I'm Amaria Jones, continuing to report with FSTV from Netroots Nation in Philadelphia. And this gathering of activists, both digital and online, is working to figure out how to build upon the momentum of 2018 going into 2020. And so that's why I'm thrilled to be talking to Brianna Titone, who is a newly elected, last year, a member to the Colorado House of Representatives, representing the 27th district um, in Colorado, which is just outside of Denver. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thank you. So um, you are a trans woman candidate who won in a conservative Republican leaning district um, in the off cycle last year. You assumed office in, in January of this year. There's lots of talk here about what Democrats need to do to win next year. And there's a lot of attention on places like you won. So can you tell us um, what advice or insights do you have to offer from your experience to progressives, to the Democratic Party, um, about how to do that? Well, I kind of looked at what people really wanted and, and really asked them what they wanted and what they needed. And, and that was part of our, our campaign was going door to door and uh, gathering that information uh, face to face with people because uh, it's important to actually get out into the neighborhoods and, and actually talk to people. Um, my team and I and my volunteers, we knocked on about 50,000 doors uh, to win my election. And um, that was a really good experience. We were in neighborhoods that nobody had ever canvassed according to the people we talked to. They had never seen a legislator actually do the canvassing, or a candidate, rather. Um, so it was the first time that they actually got to talk face to face with the person who was actually running. And, you know, I had a good story. Um, I had a good background, a, a history of working in my community, volunteering. And, you know, I talked about that and how this is the way I wanted to continue to work for the people. And being honest and authentic was something that I think people really, uh, they really accepted and, and got on board with. Because I think that most people have lost faith in politics and the government. And when they can actually have a conversation with somebody and really feel like they're being told the truth, I think it goes a long way. And part of what I did was tell people very frankly that they're not gonna like everything that I vote on. I mean, you know, you can't promise everything to everybody. And I think that people have been sold that idea that they're always gonna get what they want and then they're not being delivered that. So I just told everybody, you're not gonna get everything that you want from me, but if you don't like what I do, I would like to talk to you about it. And I would like to explain to you why I voted a certain way on a certain bill. And re people really, uh, they really accepted that as a good answer. And I think you know, they, they took some faith in, in me to represent them. There's a lot of conversation or a question about whether or not, um, you know, people who voted for Donald Trump are willing to, are even gettable for Democrats. What did you find out from your doorstop experience that tells you that that's not the case? Well, I talked to, we, we had to talk to a lot of people in our district and, and the district is made up of 38% unaffiliated voters. 28% uh, are Republicans, 24 are Democrat. Okay. So I really had to win over the unaffiliated people, which we really don't know. They, they vote one way and they vote the other way right. constantly. So they are really reactive uh, to what the message is. Mm. I had conversations with people at the door that they would tell me that they voted for every single Republican on the ballot in the previous election. Now, most people would say, don't waste your time with this person. Right. right. <laughs> but I continued to have conversations with, with this one particular guy, and we found a common area to talk about. He was the HOA president, I was the HOA president, and we talked about the struggles of 
running an HOA and all the different personalities. And we, we really started to get a rapport and, and a commonality that we could find that strength together. And by the end of the conversation, he said, you know, I'll probably vote for you. So, you know, we can't give up too easily on the people that we think we're going to lose. And we can't be afraid to have the hard conversations because we, that's where you win people over. And, that, and when I won by 439 votes out of nearly 50,000 votes that were cast in my district, every single vote counts. So every conversation that we had had to be a really good conversation. So, you know, I don't discount anybody uh, that they're winnable. I think that, you know, they just really need to establish the trust and the understanding that if they're a middle of the road voter and they've kind of been persuaded to one side, there, there's a reason why, you know, we do a persuasion uh, canvassing is to persuade people to, to come over. And, uh, you know, we, we did that in my district and we persuaded a lot of people. And when you have over 70% turnout, you have to persuade people. You can't just find more people to vote. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of people turning out. And uh, so you really have to go out there and have those conversations to, uh, to get them. How do you think, or how do you think, or to what degree, or did the fact that you are trans play into your race at all? I think it was a positive thing. Um, I only had really one bad experience at a door where someone was really kind of uh, rude <laughs> to my face. But a lot of times uh, there were people that have trans kids or sibling or someone in their family and when they saw me they had heard about me and they were very excited so i think that it was a positive more than a negative and believe it or not i mean even after the election was over people still didn't know i was a trans person wow because we didn't talk about it even when i had conversations with people you know, sometimes they would be confused and not even realize I was the candidate, even though I'm handing them a piece of lit with my picture on it. And they're like, oh, well, what does she stand for? I'm like, well, this is what I stand for. Uh, right. I stand for this, that, and the other thing. And I think some people were confused about it, but it, it didn't really sway them because the message was there. And it was really the message that was important. And, and that's where we try to build the message to be more important than the identity. And... You know, when you're willing to do the hard work of being a public servant and you demonstrate that, it, it goes a long way. So uh, the identity stuff, you know, we, we put that in the back seat and if people thought that was an important thing to them, whether a positive or negative, that was their business to, to do, but we were running on the issues. Um, and one last question, there is a lot of debate right now in the Democratic Party as a whole that's centered on the House of Representatives. You serve in a state house, not in the, but you know the dy dynamics are very similar. Um, where there's an argument between essentially the people that won in districts like you, right, which is why Democrats have the majority because they won in places like the 27th district. Um, and people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the so-called squad, who come from safe districts who want the party to be uh, bolder, more radical, um, in quotes. I'm wondering, what do you think about that tension and what advice would you give to Democrats overall about um, this tension? Well, I mean, if the people in AOC's district are willing to elect her, then that's what the values of that district are. Right. So why should we be fighting the will of the people in that district? If people want to elect someone who is very progressive, uh, then let them do it uh, and, and let the people decide. It shouldn't be the party that decides who runs. And uh, that's really what it comes down to. It's uh, the people's will. That's what a democracy is all about. Yeah, I don't think the argument is about whether or not she should not be allowed to run or whether or not she represents her district, because she clearly does. Everybody represents their yeah. district, right? It's also the fact that there are people um, who, 40 of whom come from marginal districts, they also represent their districts, yeah. and their districts want something else 
it, that's slightly different than what she wants. And that's the tension, right? Not the fact that she is representing the Bronx and Queens, because she clearly does, you know? Well, I mean, in my district, I have a lot of people that are very conservative, and they don't like the way I do a lot of things, too. And I have to make concessions to some of the things that they want. Right. So, I mean, it goes, whether you're you're trying to uh, please the moderate people in your district, yeah. it's the same thing as trying to please the Republicans or the conservatives in your district when that needle is moved more towards the middle. Yeah. So I walk a very tight rope a lot of times in my district because when I have such a slim margin, I can't afford to lose That's right. people from supporting me. I right. need to get more people to get on board. And, right. and it's very difficult sometimes to please everybody. I yeah. mean, you really can't. Yeah. It's and impossible. I, and I think that's actually the tension is we have, the party has such tension from because it's the now a majority party in the House, and so that means you got everybody there. And yep. so, as you say, there's a tightrope. Yep, yep, every day. Well, congratulations you. on your win. Good luck on your re-election. Um, thank you for your service and for running, because uh, being in public life is not easy. Um, and thank you for sharing your insights today. Yeah, well, thanks so much. Representation really does matter. Yes, and I'm um, happy to be representing the people in my district. Great, thank you. All right, thanks and a lot. Thank you for joining us at FSTV. Stay tuned.